I wonder if there's more to this than just pure entertainment. And I'll never forget, I had stumbled across your podcast and I was listening to it. And then I just became more and more inspired. But at this point, I wasn't ever thinking about myself or putting myself first. So the more inspired I got, I realized I'd have to start taking action, but I wasn't going to take action. So I stopped listening to your podcast. Hey, it's Heather Chauvin, wife, mother of three boys, former social worker, breadwinner, recovering hustler, and stage four cancer survivor. I'm not a fan of that term, by the way. Beyond all of these titles and labels, I'm a human being, just like you, attempting to navigate it all while feeling good. My goal on this podcast is to show you that you can live an energized, sustainable life, both at home and in your work. It doesn't matter if you stay at home full time, if you work from home, you're a CEO, a a successful business owner, or trying to find some inspiration. On this show, I attempt to keep it real with stories, interviews, and random thoughts. This is not a business or career podcast, and it's not a parenting podcast. It's both and so much more. You will laugh. You may even cry. And... You may even get a little frustrated with the truth you've been hiding from yourself. I believe all human behavior is a language, whether it's through your child's behavior, your health, or a relationship. And when we learn to listen instead of react, we begin to understand what it truly means to feel alive and in control. It's time to put your big girl pants on and find your brave. Let's go. big believer that change is possible when you want it. We're going to dive into today's podcast. Hello, ladies. We have the amazing Katie Allen today. And you may not know Katie yet and have never heard of her before. But after today, you are going to want to check out her podcast. It's called The Just Realized podcast. It's on Apple, Stitcher, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. And you can also check out Katie on Instagram at just realized. All right. Sorry. Her Instagram is Katie just realized. So K-A-T-I-E just realized. And here's the thing. I'm on a mission to help women realize that change is possible. But oftentimes what I find is when we are in this journey for change or on this journey for change, it gets uncomfortable. We experience contrast. Everything that we have been shoving down, putting off, boils up to the surface rather quickly. And Katie is living proof that you can work in corporate, you can be married, you can have children, you can have dreams and desires and still create change in your life. She's a mom, a podcaster, a lipstick fanatic. She went from burnout, depressed and overwhelmed, playing the martyr in her life to realizing that she could change her story by putting her soul desire needs first. And now she wants to help other women do the same. I believe the more we come together as women and awaken ourselves and help others do the same, this, ladies, this is how we are going to change the world, one action at a time. So let's dive in. So Katie, I am so excited to have you here. It's been a journey. I am so excited to be here. Um. So I'm going to introduce you to the women. I love to have conversations with people who are your everyday woman and then people who maybe are a little further along on the journey or people I just meet and I'm like, you inspire me. I want to record our conversation. Um, But Katie, you are somebody who inspires me. Oh, thank you. You inspire me. So, well, thank you. I will, I will receive that. Um, Yes. I believe you listened to my podcast and I, then I want to say you sent me an email or something and I ended up reading it on the podcast. Yes, that is correct. That was kind of like this big pivotal moment for me. Mm -hmm. I had been listening to your podcast since March. I previously had never listened to podcasts 
for self-help. I'd only done it from a place of pure entertainment, like binging, binging podcasts like Serial or Shit Town. And then I was done with those and I was in this weird place. And I was like, I wonder if there's more to this than just pure entertainment. And I'll never forget, I had stumbled across your podcast and I was listening to it. And then I just became more and more inspired. But at this point, I wasn't ever thinking about myself or putting myself first. So the more inspired I got, I realized I'd have to start taking action, but I wasn't going to take action. So I stopped listening to your podcast. Interesting. So you're like, I'm not going to do the work, so I'm just going to stop listening. Yeah. And I can only say that now, like when I'm doing this, I don't realize this about myself, but then obviously with this comes some self-awareness. So I stop, then I feel myself, I feel that depression starting to creep back in that I had never really struggled with until about the end of 2018. So now we're like in spring 2019, I'm getting super inspired. I have a lot going on. I start pulling back and I start pulling back. And I probably go like two months without listening to it. And then I'm driving home one night. It's an interview you do with Susan Hyatt, because now I will never forget this one. And you're talking about your freedoms on the other side of your fear and stop letting fear and guilt control everything you do. And I just had this huge aha moment. And you were like, you know, if you guys are inspired by this or if you have feedback about the podcast, send me an email. And like up to this point, I would never do anything like that. Probably because everything I did was from a place of ego, not even privately. Everything I did was from a place of ego. So I would never do that because why would you read my email? Mm -hmm. And I will never forget, I'm sitting with my husband night. It's Friday night. And usually after Friday, after working all day, we'd come home, we'd have drinks or whatever and hang out. And I'm just sitting there with him and I'm like, hold on, just give me 15 minutes. And he's like, what are you doing? I was like, I just need 15 minutes. (laughs) And I go upstairs in my bedroom and like, this is the beginning of me, like creating boundaries and like figuring out what I want. In hindsight, I realize that. And I just like spew out this email to you on a Friday. Mm -hmm. And then I think it's later that next week, you'd read, you read it on the podcast and I'm kind of behind on the podcast a little bit Mm -hmm. and I read it and I like literally about to crash my car. (laughs) I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. And I stop it because I'm like, oh my God, I, I don't even know what to think. And that was the moment where I realized holy shit, I have some power. Like there's connection, there's, there's stuff out there and I've been holding it back for so long. This is so crazy to me because I get a lot of emails or Instagram messages. And I remember being in that place where I wasn't, first of all, I don't, it has taken me a long time to realize that I have influence, if that makes sense. Yes. Um, And I see you, people do this to you too, because now you have your own podcast. Yes, I do. What's it called? It's it's called Just Realized. Okay. So you put out your podcast and I see people, even in the group, because you're a part of our mastery coaching program and people will go, oh my gosh, Katie, that was so inspiring. And then you will say, yeah, I wanted to vomit and shit my pants when I hit publish on that episode. (laughs) Yes. So every time I, w- I want to talk about vulnerability and inspired action because what I love about you, Katie, and what I know is going to benefit you now. Well, I'm sure it got you to where you are today is your, um, as Marie Forleo calls it, everything is figure outable, but you implement and take action quickly where I see a lot of people getting stuck is indecision fatigue and they just sit and overthink and, And it's this energy of sitting on the fence and the universe is like, I'm confused, right? Like, is she in or is she out? And I can feel it too, where, you know, people will be like, I don't know, ah, scary, it's this. And I'm like, listen, if you are not committed to this, like you can jump all in to the deep end and be scared, but you have to realize you have the power to make shit happen in your life and you can do it scared. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So what I'm kind of finding as I go through this journey is it's a little bit of a gift and a curse to take action like that. Prior to finding myself and really doing anything for myself, I was really good at taking action for other people. And I was really good at checking the boxes that everybody said I should check, you know, go to college, get married, have kids, get a job, climb the ladder. 
And I don't, I can't really speak from the place of where that drive came from other than I just had this desire to just create a different life than like my childhood. We grew up with a happy childhood, but we just didn't have a lot of means like as an income. And I just always swore maybe because I was the oldest child. I just always swore like, I'm going to grow up and I'm going to make all this money. Like, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm just going to do it. And I guess that just came from, I started to realize like, oh, if I take action, things happen and things get done and I could see things moving forward, but nothing, I had never slowed down to think about like, well, what did I really want or what I was passionate about? I always just kind of rooted myself in this idea is like, if I did something, there was always a reaction good or bad. And you just kind of figured it out from there. Mm. But I also think the curse to that was now I'm doing everything. Now I'm pleasing everybody. And why I have this quote unquote fantastic life. Well, why do I feel so dead inside? Why am I laying in my closet floor at 38 years old? Like what the hell am I going to do with my life? Is this all there is? Yeah. Because I've never, ever slowed down to think about what did I actually want? What did Katie want? What did I need? Because I was too busy just taking action for other people to get results that were good, but they weren't purpose driven. They were always ego driven. Mm -hmm. I always say to people, I'm like, look what you've accomplished in your life. Just imagine if we focus your energy right? Your energy and attention, what you can make happen. And it's, it's neuroscience. Like we're so conditioned to be one way and that's why it's like the power of habit formation. Um, and it's, you know, it's taken me a while to get there too, but realizing, okay, if I just wake up five minutes earlier today and do that, maybe even just every week I make it five minutes earlier, by the end of the year, I'm getting up, I'm not doing math in my head, but let's just say I'm getting up an hour Mm -hmm. before and it's becoming an actual habit. And so the interesting part is we can change in little increments in time and we're manifesting and creating habits all the time, right? we're We're like, how did I get here? Because every day you did something that got you here and it was a building blocker. How did I get in this relationship? How did, how did I let somebody do this? How did I let go of myself so much? And yeah, it's just, it blows my mind, the unwillingness. So here's my thing. Now that you've drank in my Kool-Aid, as I call it, (laughs) and you are, you're in and you're convinced now that you, people are like, is this a cult? I've actually had people say that to me. I'm like, I don't know. You can call it a cult if you want, but it's a feel good cult. And I am not I'm not making you recite any lines here. This is all on you. Um, Yes. But my point of that is we buy into this cultural expectation of women that if you're not exhausted, you're not doing it right. And I take a stand for if you're not feeling good, something's off. So what, what has been like a big awakening for you now that you're like, okay, I know there is another way and you're observing the world. Like how has that changed for you? Oh man, it's changed so much. I, people just, they do these things every day and they don't even realize they do them and they realize, they don't realize that they hold the power. And what I see every day now, men and women, is they just give their power away constantly. Like you said, in these little teeny pieces day by day, and you don't realize you're doing it. And it's crazy. Like, I remember my husband talking to me when this whole thing kind of first started happening and he's like, you need a hobby. And I was like, but I don't know how to have a hobby anymore. Like you guys are my hobby because at this point I had let everything chip away for so long. I didn't even know how to come back and even find myself. I remember pep talking myself, like going back to that feeling of overwhelm and burnout. I remember like pep talking myself one day in the kitchen, like this is what women do. You're breaking barriers. You have this amazing career and you're raising kids and you're the breadwinner. And you know, you're, really helping move women forward. And it's okay if you're tired, like it's not going to be forever, but this is just what you have to do. And I wholeheartedly believed that story that I just had to just keep chugging along every day. This is, this is what I signed up for. This is what women do. You go to work all day, you kick ass, you come home, you cook dinner, you give baths or whatever that is for you. And you're just always busy and you're always tired, but that's what you wanted to do. And that's your kind of like your sacrifice for, you know, pushing women forward as far as a career space. And 
I literally can envision myself pep talking myself mm-hmm. that it was okay to be tired at the kitchen sink one night. And it blows it's not, mind. it's yeah. not. And, and that's why I named the podcast just realized because it was like one day my husband and I were just kind of going back and forth. And I was like, I just realized that I get, I give my power away every day. And it's in these little teeny pieces like, Hey, can you stay late? Or a friend like, Hey, can you just come to this birthday party? Or, I mean, I can't think of, you know, those little examples and it's like day by day by day. Mm -hmm. And I think what really, where I really struggled is I had always considered myself this strong, independent woman that takes action and gets things done. So how could I lose myself? Like that's for someone who Mm -hmm avoids conflict or someone who's meek and doesn't speak up. Like I'm speaking up, I'm doing all these things. How could I not be speaking up for myself? Like, how did I not realize that I wasn't speaking up for myself? I feel powerful, but yet I'm giving my power away every opportunity I can without realizing it. Mm -hmm. It blows my mind. I can't, it, when you say, how could I not realize it? And I look back on, who I was. And I, the interesting part is, and I know people will only hear this when they truly want to hear this. Um, I'm so grateful I got sick, but at the same time, it, 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 it saddens me a little bit that we have to have that crisis in order to wake up. Um, because previous to that, I was, I was reading all the books. I had coaches, I had a business, I just didn't have any role models, like literally all the female coaches that I hired who supported me in my personal or professional life were burnt out. And Mm -hmm. they're like, oh yeah, that's just the way it is. Just kind of what you said. And so now, even if like, I will attract people who go, I'm nowhere near burnout or nowhere near like that crisis state. And I don't want to get there. So I just want to like be in your energy to see what you do on a daily basis and how you show up. Like, I just think it's so important for us to be that role model and embody what we desire for other people because it is so important to realize, like I would sit there just like you going, what is wrong with me? Why am I so angry and resentful? No one Mm -hmm. else seems to be that way. How can they, how can they run on fumes and put a smile on their face. Cause I just want to like curl up in a ball and die. Resentment was my best friend, mm. my, my best friend. And like you were kind of saying, like you have to have this crisis situation for me. It was like six years ago, my daughter was born our second kid and she had some developmental delays from birth. Actually when I'm pregnant is when it started like towards the end. And that just busted me wide open because it rocked my marriage to the core. It was full of resentment on both sides. And we were college sweethearts. We've been together since we're 19. We're 38, but it's like half my life. He's all I knew. And I'm sitting there. He's staying at his mom's house. I'm sitting here with two kids. One kid, I'm not sure if she'll ever walk at this point. No one knows what's wrong with her. And I'm just busted wide open. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. There's how the fuck did I get here? Like, what are we doing right now? I I don't even know who I am anymore. And that's when I realized that was the beginning of everything I've ever done to this point Mm. was from a place of ego and from a place of a victim mentality. And that's kind of where I started that journey. But then it wasn't until like last year or 2018, excuse me, into 2018, when I realized that I had put so much effort into rebuilding my family and being the perfect mom and being the perfect employee that I had left myself somewhere in the back burner all those years. So let's talk about, I was going to say, let's talk about vulnerability. (laughs) (laughs) I know this is your favorite topic. Yes. So I, because I think I was so driven by ego for so long. And when you operate in that place, it's no vulnerability, right? Because vulnerability is weak. So I'm going on this specific, give me a specific example. So some people, we've all heard of ego, but sometimes people are like, what does ego even mean? So give me an example of like, maybe at work or in your marriage or parenting where you're coming from ego. And then when you're coming from a place of vulnerability. So for me, coming from a place of ego is... 
you know, I worked really hard to get where I am in my career. And I mean, I'm still very proud of my career, but I was really proud to say like what I did or what my title was because people respected that. You know, you're like at a neighborhood party or something and someone's like, well, what do you do? Where do you work? And you're like, oh, I'm the blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it feels really good. But then it actually feels really empty because instead of saying, oh, this is my job, I'd love to say, oh, I'm actually a really fucking happy person. But no, I'm not. <laughs> and to me, that's what I started to under- realize is like that e- that place of ego was about things, about having things, about titles or materials or creating this life, living in this zip code or something like that, where doing something from like a place of vulnerability was hey, I actually don't know what the fuck I'm doing right now and I could use a little bit of help. And only recently, since I've been in this program, have I even been able to use those skills at work. And what I'm finding is when you do open up like that, because we're all real, we're all humans. And you know, we joke about this a lot when you're like, oh yeah, I can read your mind. Because everyone's connected and everyone feels the same way you feel, just no one will ever say it. Mm -hmm. And instead of going at everything with like, oh, I know exactly what I'm doing because this is my job title. No, I don't know everything. I hold a few qualities that maybe other people aren't as good at. So it makes me a good leader, but that doesn't mean I know everything. It just means I'm good at managing people or I'm good at making people feel good so they can get their job done. Right. But it took me so long to realize that, that when I actually started admitting that, hey, I don't know everything, but oh, this is how we can work together at so work. Not, Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, so how is that specifically unfolding? Like, what are you noticing at work and at home? Um, kind of, yeah, being more open. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. So whether I'm at work and at home, like, it's all so connected. At first, I had a lot of resistance on what I was doing with myself, bringing it and sharing it, like, at home, and then transferring over to work. But what I found is that it's created so much more space in my life. I feel like I have time that I didn't even know that I had. And it's just made me a better person. It's definitely made me a better coworker and employee because when you ask for help, now you have more than one person collaborating on something. And like you always say, like that's where the real magic happens because this person is good at this and this person's good at that. Now we're creating something even better And the same for our household. Now my husband and I can be better parents because what he may not be, maybe he's not good at it today because he had a rough day, then I can step in or vice versa. And you just really begin to help each other. And the more open you are, then it lets the other person be more open and share their things. And now you're actually creating something stronger and better than it was before just by being vulnerable. I love this. What, um... What does your husband say to you now? Like, can he tell something shifted inside of you? Yeah, he's like, thanks for showing up. (laughs) I've been waiting for you. Uh Uh-huh. He's a serial entrepreneur and he makes music. So he's kind of always had this passion that, and always led a life that was really defined by his passion. And I just, I was always been really supportive of him, but I just couldn't always get my head around it because I was so focused on what society was always telling me to do. Mm -hmm. And he never really followed that path. And he really, really went deep and he had lost one of his businesses back in 2009. So I think for him, his ego journey started well before like minded. So Mm -hmm. he's been like, wow, it's amazing to see you really just kind of come into yourself. And I'm just so happy that finally you're starting to figure out like what really lights your ass on fire. So what does light your ass on fire? (laughs) I think just sharing, like I've always liked to share my voice. I've always liked to talk. I really, really like collaborating with people, Mm -hmm. but I just don't think I was really doing it from the right place. I think I was just operating out of a place of fear instead of love. And now I'm really starting to realize like all those things that I liked about work, I still like them about like leading meetings and presentations and inspiring people. It's just an opportunity to really do it from a different place. And I also didn't know what I wanted to share, but now that I've really tapped into this like vulnerability thing and just telling my story and being so open with it and realizing how much power 
is in telling your story and sharing it with other people, I'm just like, that's it. Like, I feel like I have to let other women know mm-hmm. you do not have to feel like shit. Like you don't. And that's my new mission. Yeah. And it, it's interesting because I don't know, it, it just blows my mind. Like you, once you're in it, I think you can hear things from people, but there is some magic. And when you are there doing it, kind of like the whole Brene Brown thing, right? Like being in the arena. Yes. You can, I respect people so much more who have gone through the same things as me or who are in it because I'm like, I get you. Right. I wouldn't say it's so much a respect. It's just like, you get it. You're like, oh my gosh, I, I think that was amazing. That was so inspiring. Uh, it's funny because I don't really have a lot of feedback. I just attended an event with a colleague and she's like, okay, I want your feedback. I'm like, that was amazing. Like if you ask the participants in the room, they might say the beans were too cold. The lighting sucked. The temperature (laughs) was weird in here. I'm like, that's just their you know, type A micromanaging bullshit. I said, but it takes a lot of energy and practice um, planning to pull off something, even if it's a podcast or anything that if we can just look at the, I don't want to say the positives, but the courage in people rather than trying to like pull them down all the time, this is where we have that collaboration. And I think you and I were talking about this before I hit record about women. Like I am such an advocate for women helping women. And oftentimes when I'm talking to people and I say, yeah, most of the work that I do is in a community setting because there's so much value beyond what I can ever give you by bringing like-minded women together. And most women who have not experienced it before, do not understand the power of community um, until they've experienced it. Exactly. I didn't even know that I craved community until Mm -hmm. I joined this community. It was a game changer for me. I was like, I've never felt like this. I have never, ever felt empowered to ever be vulnerable Mm -hmm. because there is a lot of like that tear down, like, oh, if I'm not special, then who am I? Instead of being united, there's this desire when you're operating from a place of ego to be special and stand out. Yeah. And I just, I never realized that. And I was like, oh my God, I need community more than I need anything. And you don't it, need to be, you don't need to be like, you know, rah, rah and chanting the whole time either. It could just be like a coffee with a friend who's holding space for you. As I say, that's the biggest thing I've learned is people, you just need to hold space. They don't always really even need you to fix their problems or they don't even really want your advice. They just want to know that there's someone there that supports them wholeheartedly, no matter what it is. Yeah, that's been a big learning opportunity for me um, because I'm a recovering rescuer and a lot of people look up to me as a coach. Um, Mm -hmm. So I've, I've started to ask people, like if they send me a message or Voxer, like client wise, I'm like, what do you need from me? And they're like, I just need you to hear me. I'm like, okay. And then I know I don't need to respond with an action item because I'm always like, let's get shit done. Okay, we can solve this problem. But not all problems need to be solved. Sometimes we just need to sit in it and to process. Yeah, I think that's something I've learned about myself too is when I feel weird or scared or if I know I'm telling myself a story, if I can just say it out loud Mm. to two or three people, I don't even need them to say anything except for, I heard you. Like, yes, I hear you. That's it. Then I can actually work through my own shit if I can just say it out loud. And that's it. I just need to know that this person holds space for me. They're not going to judge me. I can be as vulnerable as I need to. And that's it. And that's what I think you really get from a community of like-minded women, but people don't know how or where to even go to create that. Yeah. It's beautiful. That's why I love podcasting, especially when I'm talking to myself because no one responds. (laughs) I know. (laughs) I'm like, I I can talk. Yeah. Um, Amazing. So Katie, you are an action taker. You are, let's throw noodles at the wall and see what <laughs> sticks. You have drank in the Kool-Aid. You see the light at the end of the tunnel. And then the tunnel just gets bigger and bigger and there's more light, more light, more light. Um, the journey is not over, 
right? The journey is never done. So what would be like your words of wisdom for someone listening today that's maybe like where you were um, a year ago? My words of wisdom are just slow down and just listen to yourself and just sit with yourself and really just try to get in tune with what you want. How do you want to feel? What would make you happy in this moment? And just continue to say yes to yourself and put yourself first and do not give your power away. I love it. And I'm just going to have a follow-up question for you, which is, what does that mean to actually listen to yourself? So if someone said, just listen to yourself, and you're like, how the fuck do you do that? What, <laughs> what would be some specific step-by-step guidance you could give someone? So the things that have been working for me, um, journaling, even though I resist the shit out of it, every time I actually just sit down and just do it, things come up that I just didn't even know. And I take that as a form of listening to myself, um, just sitting still. Like if I literally just kind of sit still and you had talked about this one time and it really moved me, it was just sit still for like two to five minutes. And what, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Cause that's usually the right thing and go with it and just lean into it. That's how I even really tapped into this vulnerability thing is I just was really, really struggling and I couldn't identify it. even what the feeling was because it wasn't fear. Nothing was going on in my life. Nothing was bad, but I just didn't feel good. And I just sat in my bathroom one night, my bathroom sink and just took a couple deep breaths and just the word of vulnerability just kind of came to me. And I just had this huge aha moment, but I don't think I would have gotten there without just knowing to just slow down. Mm-hmm. And that's something like as an action taker, I have to really try hard to just slow down and stop listening to everything and just try to pause and really just reflect to yourself. Yeah. It's, um, it blows my mind that the more and more I do this work, the more I realize we need space and we need to hear ourselves and how much we resist that and how much people are like, just tell me the fucking answer. And I'm like, how about you tell me what you think? And then I can give you feedback on that. Um, Because if you are constantly seeking outside yourself for validation, you're never going to trust the guidance that's within you. And that creates codependency. Yes. Yes. And like you said, usually the first thing that comes to your mind, you will think it's the wrong thing and you will try to resist it. But if you just go with it, I've seen amazing things come out of that. Amazing. And that is vulnerable to trust yourself and go, I have no proof that this is going to work. Let's see what happens. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So where can people find you? So I'm on Instagram at Katie Just Realized. And my podcast is on Apple, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spotify, all the big players. Um, it's the Just Realized podcast where we talk about all these things. And I'm just trying to spread the message and tell my story. Amazing. And what do you, what else is bubbling up inside of you? What do you think you're going to be creating in 2020? Um, my big, big goal for 2020 is to stop playing small and support others because I'm a firm believer that what I do to others, I do to myself. So I really, really want to connect more and more and continue to build community through supporting all the amazing women that I know in my life and help them tell their stories too. Amazing. Thank you, Katie, so much. I'm just so incredibly grateful that you keep um, what I call following the breadcrumbs and listening and acting because that's where the magic is unfolding in your life. So I'm just, I'm grateful you're showing up. Thanks, Heather. 